Hallelujah. Father God, thank you for this day. For this is your day, Lord. Thank you for the privilege, oh Heavenly Father, to be able to present your word to your people, God. Let me decrease and you increase. Anoint each ear so they hear what you want to hear, Lord. Anoint me, God. Give me the boldness that I need, Father, to bring forth thy word. Let the words of my mouth, O oh Heavenly Father, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord. My strength and my redeemer. Amen. You can be seen if you want, but if you can only imagine, I guess you'll be running around. And, and, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a thing how you want to be clean. When you think about it, when you only imagine, when you want to see that, but you got to be clean to see Jesus. If you're not clean, you're not going to see him. He don't need any. He, don't, he ain't going to accept any dirt. Understand, we got to stay in his word. We got to be clean by the word of God. We got to trust God in his word. We got to understand that it's really not about us, but about God having his way in us. I say that every time, every time I pray. But guess what? I keep saying it like Paul said. Because one day I call those things that be not as though they are going to be. So one day that, 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 that spirit is going to take hold. It already taken hold, but it's, it's just a little bit. It ain't where it bloom like it is in the, rose, in the rose garden one day. But that's what we're striving for. We're striving for to be like Christ. We have to realize we have to be, we have to be righteous before God and his man, his people. We can't be, say, this, this day and do this the next day or say that tomorrow and do another thing the day before or then people can see it. Our problem is people, we forget. We think we hide from people. You can't hide from God. God always know what you're doing and what you ain't doing. And God will reveal them to some of them people. Something that you're doing wrong, God will reveal it to them. And yeah, know what's going on. Because you got a sixth sense in you, which is the Holy Spirit. The Word of God said we became a new creature, right? Old things pass away, all, all things begin new. How does things begin new? You got to be washed in the Word. The Word of God got to clean you. And if it don't clean you, then you're still dirty. You can go down. You can get baptized. Go down, or go, go, go in the water, devil, and you can come up a devil, but just be wet. That's all. Ain't nothing happened yesterday. All you went down, come back wet. Or you can go down in that water, and it can be trouble. Like you used to trouble the water. And the angels came and asked him, say, do you want to go in this water? He said, I want to go, but they can't go. He said, every time I try to go, paraphrase, every time I try to go, somebody pull me back. I crawl up, they pull me back. I've been doing it for 38 years. I'm crawling, trying to get there. But they keep pulling me back, Jesus. But he troubled that water that time for him and picked him up and put him in there. And when he put him in the water, he was healed. And he was healed from, from his head to his toe. And I thank God, thank you for healing each and every one. Because I tell you, I, well, I'm going to give you my title, and I'm going to go to y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all must know I'm talking about some cleaning water or something, right? Well, let me say this here. Washing in the, in the Word. Washing in the Word of God. Now, I wasn't going to say it because she had already told. She took some, my wife took some of my thunder Wednesday on that because I had this here. I'm going to tell you something that happened by watching. That's when I got it, when this happened to her. And, and we was like home doing the country stuff. We were like blanching green. Now, y'all know what, some of y'all know what blanching is. That means you put it in greens in the pot in hot water and then take it out in about five minutes and put it in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer. In the freezer. Oh, cold, that's right, cold water and ice. That's what she come with. I just say put it in cold water and let it just, let it just get time to get warm, get cool. But she wasn't putting ice. Anyway, so as we going on now, I'm in there. We doing. We didn't clean the greens. We didn't cut them up. We didn't do what we had to do. 
So now we blanching the greens. I'm sitting up in there reading in the living room. She's doing the blanching right now. Don't get me wrong. I helped her. I helped her clean them and wash them. And I blessed some of them too. I ain't ashamed. I can cook. I will cook. And clean. Not lately, though, but I will. I will. And I can. <laughs> but anyway, as we going on, plumb in there, and all of a sudden, I hit this big screen. I mean, the roof came off. And I'm like, wow, what's going on? So I went into the kitchen. I mean, what's wrong? She had a hand underneath the water. So I grabbed her hand, and when I grabbed her hand, Bishop, she squeezed me. You think she had a baby? I mean, she squeezed me and hollered, thank you, Jesus. And I said, what happened? She said, you ain't going to bleed this, but I scored my hand. I said, how you score your hand? She said, well, I was putting the greens in there, and you know, when the greens be boiling, they'll come back up on you because they don't want to get burned either. <laughs> they ain't coming up, rising up. So evidently, she took her hand, not thinking, Push them down in scalding hot water. I said, first of all, I want to look at I want to hit her. But I know I couldn't. I had to show compassion. I had to have compassion. Plus, I should believe me or not, I heard it when she heard it. When, I, when she did that, I'm like, Lord, have mercy. So we did everything we can. We, she ran water. She did all She told you the story. She did all this and all that. But guess what happened? After putting her hand in scalding hot water, she even said this before I go. She said, people in hell better understand. This is hell. She said, when I put my hand in the hot water, even when I put stuff on it, it still was burning. She said, that's how they're going to be burning in hell. So if you ain't right, you better get right because you don't want to burn. Anyway, so she put her hand, so we did that. She got her hand out. We did what we had to do. We she sit up there with water in her hand all night long. And I we kind of slept off and on. But anyway, she finally went to sleep and got together. I went and got her some medicine, put on her hand. Do you realize that at all that, she didn't have not one blister at all? I mean, she put her hand in there. I mean, I wasn't there when she did it, but. I know how it happened. I know how because I, God showed me. See, sometimes God will show you something because you think you're better than them, so he's going to show you that you're not as better than you think you are. Because at the same time, I was doing it for her. I said, she done burned her hair, now I got to do the blanching. And she said, huh? And now she had a big spoon to put down in the pot to make sure that, you know, the stuff don't come up, the green don't come up. So I'm looking, why you, how you do that? So anyway... I, my time, I'm putting them in the pot. And as I'm putting them in the pot, now I see them rising up. The first time, I took the spoon. The second time, whoa, wait a minute. That's how that happened. God showed me how it happened. I said, okay, God, I'll leave it alone. But just telling God still is in a miracle business. We keep on, people keep on talking. Uh, well, well, God, ain't, the miracles are not working. Oh, the miracles are working. We just, some people just not receiving them because he's still in a miracle and, and one is been. And, and not only that, and I thought about it, I said, well, God, this is what I was going to talk about. Well, not me, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is through me. And, and so I'm going to turn the Bible. I got two places I want to hit in the Bible real quick. One is going to be, we're going to pick out one, one verse out of Titus, the second, third chapter. And then we're going to go to First John. Amen? And, and as I was reading it, and I was saying, it said, not by works or righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. All the, that's why we are renewed by the Holy Spirit. And I was telling her, look how, that's how God cleans us. Because of how that water is, her hand is clean now. Even though I was looking at that hand, I was thinking about a pig feet. Anybody look good to eat? <laughs> I'm like, Lord, help mercy, girl. But, but 
I thank God that he took care of them pretty, pretty feet. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. And I, I am, <laughs> and, but, we, but, but by the Holy Ghost. So you can't clean yourself. You need the Holy Ghost to clean you. We need the Holy Ghost to regenerate us. We need the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us, mold us, shape us, heal us, and deliver us. We can't do it on our own. We need the Holy Ghost to show us what we have to do. Because a lot of times when you try to go do it by yourself, you forget where you're going. Or you forget what you're doing. Ask my wife. I ain't got to ask me. I know some things. Because a lot of things, I'm in that age now where I used to be real sharp. But now, I'm, a, I'm getting a little dull here. Uh, some things I can remember, some things I don't. Some things I say I'm going to do and I forget where. I can go in the room right now and forget what did I come in here for. I have to wait a second to see where's what it was. Remember, oh, you came for this. The Holy Ghost had to bring it to my remembrance. Because if he don't bring it to your remembrance, he ain't gonna, you ain't going to remember it. And that's the same thing with the Word of God. We need the Holy Ghost to wash us and clean us and renew our minds so that we be able to present our body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable in his sight. Amen? Just remember, we got to be regenerated. Regenerate means replenish, redone, rebuild up again. You have to get empty. That's why you have to read the word every day. When you get empty, you go come back up. It, it re renew you, regenerate you. So when, we, so when I do, when the generator get, get down and out, they have to push the bus, plug it back in again. Same with here. When we get down and out, we have to stay in the word of God. And if you watch, now I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 John. We're going to go read from 1 to 9 and 10, we're going to get out your way. Because I, I don't know why, but it would just happen that way. I forgot when they told me, when they asked me, can I go to Camden and preach, I forgot I had to preach that morning. But after I said, yeah, I got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. So I still got to go. So, but I appreciate you. I thank you. I thank God for, his, for what he's doing. Because I know one thing. I, ain't, he ain't, I didn't call me. He called me. So if he's going to give me this, this mean to do, then I know this commitment to do, he's going to bring it to pass. He's going to be the one who has to perform it. Amen? Amen. Amen. And now look at here. It says, that which he for us from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen, with our eyes which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifest, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you this in internal life, which was with the Father, and was manifest unto us, that, we, that which we have seen, and have heard, have declared, we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son of Jesus Christ. That's what we desire to do. I desire to have fellowship with God and his Son and the Holy Spirit. See, you know, you, ain't got, you don't have to have desire in a way by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is right there with you. If you believe in Jesus Christ, he's there already. Leading you, guiding you, molding you, shaping you, even making you feel good. If you had, when the song was sung and you close your eyes and you thought about just imagine being with Jesus, that ain't nothing but the Holy Spirit. If you didn't feel good, there's something wrong with you. Because I'm telling you, you just think about it. That's a great song. If you only can imagine being with Jesus, being around the throne with him. Oh, my shot about my God. shot. Yes, Lord. Just being with him. That is what our desire is. Our desire to be able to be with Jesus. When it all said and done, now I know I'm going to come back on the horse with Bishop. Me and Bishop going to be riding together. I got me a white one go, Bishop. I got me a white stallion. And we're going to be rolling down there. And when we come back, we're going to be bucking and bucking. But we're going to be doing what the word of God said. We know that we understand, just like he told the people in Egypt. They did not understand. When God told them, he said, go. But they wouldn't go. They didn't they want to stand still. Uh-oh, y'all. Okay. <laughs> and these things write unto you, that your joy may be full. This, then, is the message. This is what I want you to get. 
This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Why ain't no darkness in God at all? Because God don't have no sin at all. So we right here sneakily sinning when we know we're doing wrong, better stop. Because God don't have none. I'm not saying that it, look, longer we're in this fleshy body, we're going to do stuff we ain't got no business doing. Because that's what it is. It's a sinful body. But what we try to do is not let this sinful body have its way. We try to make sure that we use the word of God. Like I say, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By being renewing of your mind, you realize that God is in control and not the this fleshly body. And if you want to get it in your spirit real good, read uh, 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 the fifth chapter of Galatians from 1 to 22. You'll get it. It'll let you know about all what the flesh can do, but what the spirit can do too. And it say, and if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and, the truth, and do not the truth. So all of us who say that we have fellowship, that we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we tell a lie. Because a lot of people say, go in and tell them, say, yeah, I'm saved, sanctified. Even they'll say, filled with the Holy Ghost. But what kind of Holy Ghost they feel with? Because if they still feel with the Holy Ghost, certain things that they won't do. But a lot of things they're going out and do, doesn't mean the Holy Ghost is not filled. They're not filled with the Holy Ghost. They're filled with the devil ghost. Because the Satan is what would do all the devil stuff, the sin stuff. I can tell you things. I can say God is good. God, God left. He died. Gave his only God son for me that I believe in him that I have eternal life. I let my light shine because God told me I can let my light shine so you can see my good work. But my light has got there. Ha ha! 32, 27, 7. Ha! How you doing, honey? <laughs> yeah, but that's not a good light. That's a bad light. We think, though, because TV makes us think that it's a good light. It's really not a good light. The best light we need to have is to serve God. I know you're saying, well, look at that preacher talking that way. But I know some things he did. Yes, you do. I want you to pray for me that I go stronger in the Lord, that I turn out to be the way he want me to be. See, that's why he gave us the Bible, so we can preach the Bible, so that if you say things, it's, I'm as a man thinking, uh-uh, so is he. So if I'm thinking good, I'll be good. If I'm thinking evil, I'm going to do evil. Amen? Amen? And I thought about it, how God, how good God is. See, God ain't like us. He don't care who you are or what you did. If you come to him with a sincere heart and have the faith and turn from your wicked ways and seek his faith, he'll forgive you. He ain't like us. We want to beat you across the head, make you go back 10 spaces, jump through a hoop, turn around, put on a new clothes, new head, new do a new shoes, don't like what you got on. We want to change everything. God don't change it. When we come in, in his house, you who you are. You just a brother or sister. And he came. But, but we'd be like, who that was? John, who threw off his clothes so he can go to him? Well, he put on his coat because he already out there in the, in the swimming. I mean, Peter, he already out there fishing, so he had no clothes on because the water was hitting him, and they figured we well, might well not get wet. So they were just naked. Fishing, but he seen Jesus, he put his coat on because he knew he had to have something to cover him because Jesus was just that. He had to humble himself before Jesus. That's what we don't do. We need to learn to humble ourselves before Jesus. Not that we don't do, we do, but we need to do it more often. Even maybe, hey, even longer. I mean, I retire now, but I say, God, I, I got to start getting, you know, I like that bed, but <laughs> I like, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I like that bed now. For 40-some years, I've been getting, I don't know, 40, 
almost 50 some years. I was getting up every morning before 7 o'clock. Because you're going to school. You're going to preschool, you're going to summer school, you're going to school. Still got to get up. Because that's what school do. School train you to work. So when you get out of school, you got to go to work. Now you still got the same hours. You just got different teachers. And you're getting paid for it. That's all. But I tell you, I like it. But I said, God, you gonna have, but I said, God, you got to help me. I mean, I read all day long, but I'm not all day, but I read, I read every day. But I said, God, you got to help me. Not that I want to get a regiment that I could just say, if I don't do this, do this, do this, I don't, I'm done. But I want you to help me that I can, the time that I do have, that you'll be able to let me do it right. I don't want to think about what you want me. You tell me what you want me to do. And show me what you want me, how you want me to do it. And he do it. He's showing me to get up a little earlier. And to stay up a little late, read a little more. You can watch a little TV, but a little gay. You watch TV, give me some time too. Amen. And it says, we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. But we, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will clean us from our sin, from all sin. He'll wash us. He done washed us with his blood. He's not coming back down again to wash nobody in his blood. He done did it. He done hung up on the cross. And when not a bone broken, and as he hung up on the cross, one of the soldiers had to come by. Or one of the Roman soldiers who didn't believe in Jesus and pierced him in his side. And it was, he did it for a reason. Because when he pierced him in his side, the water and blood came running out. And when the water and blood came running out, it washed us from all our sins. Who do you know that would stand up or lay, not say up, but hang up on the cross for you and me and give his life and get departed from his father? who would never been able to depart it from his dad, but that day he let it win. He said, let everything go. And, but he did it for you and me because there's nobody else that would do it. I don't know the Buddha, confusion, or nobody. Talking about giving that life for me. And I tell you one thing. I'm going with whoever going to give their life for me. I'm going for whoever tell me that I got a room where they is that I be there also. There's nobody else that told me that come and eat this bread. If you eat this bread, you're never hungry again. And if you believe in my word, you'll never thirst. So who else would I want to serve but Jesus? Jesus is his name. Jesus. Everybody that don't want to know, <laughs> they don't want to talk about Jesus. But Jesus is the reason for the season. As the song was sung earlier, out of whatever the reason for the season, and it's Jesus. He is the reason. Jesus is the reason for the season. Because if it weren't for Jesus, we wouldn't be here. Jesus is the one who said, I am the light and the way and the truth. No man can come into the Father but by me. Jesus said, I am the one. You got to come to me. You got to see me so I can tell you. Either you in or you out. That's my job. Nobody else can do it. Saint try to do it. You try to do it, but it ain't going to work. That's why I say some water, some plant, some water, but God make the increase. We got to trust God in his, in his provision. Or whatever he said he going to do, he going to do it. Whatever he call you to do, be obedient and do it. Because that's why he watches so that we can be used. You put a plant in the ground. As you plant that plant, the first thing they tell you, you need to water it a little bit. You got to keep watering it. And that's the same thing with the Word of God. We got to get watered by the Word of God because we are planted. 
He is the bride, and we are the branches. So you still need that nourishment from him. And the only way we get that nourishment is through the word of God. Y'all know y'all say y'all keep on preaching and talking about the word of God because there's nothing else that we can talk about. It's the word of God. You got to get it in you to get it out of you. You got to be able to know that if you got, if you confront it with Satan, all you got to do is submit yourself to God and resist the devil. He'll flee from you. He'll come back, though. Don't think he's gone for good. Look in Luke and tell you that he came back for a season. So that if he came back to Jesus for a season, he's going to come to me and you for a reason, too. He ain't going to leave. He's going to still come because he know he's trying to be like Jesus. He ain't trying to be like God. He know he can't be God, but he's trying to be like Jesus. He's trying to tell Jesus, Dickie said, I can get just as many bodies as you get. I can go and got here now. That's why if you come in the door, if you find, wake up on Sunday morning, and I, I can wake up Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday, it's just as nice, but on Sunday morning. That Sunday morning, that song says Sunday morning. It's something about Sunday morning. And on Sunday morning, I don't want to get up. That bed feels so good. I be laying there sometime, and I be looking over, and I'm thinking to see if my way go to move. She still be laying there. So I be saying to myself, if she get up, then I get up after her. Because that will give me some more time to get me some more rest and to sleep a little longer. But I know one thing. <laughs> Once I get it together, and I go in the bathroom and wash myself and wash in the word. I know I'm going. I'm going to serve Jesus. And I realize that's the best thing I want to do. No matter how tired I get, no matter how bold I think I am, I still got to trust Jesus. I got to know that I got to know, I got to know, I got to know, I got to know that if it weren't for Jesus, I could not be here. I got to know that he's in control. I got to give him all the glory, all the praise that doing to his name. I got to not be selfish. I got to know if I say God, you is in control, then whatever God tells this body, then that's what it needs to do. I need to be humble myself under his mighty hand. I don't want to be on my own. Because if I be on my own, I'm going to hit a brick or hit a wall. Even though I'm going to hit a wall with him, but he'll, he'll hold me up. Without him, I hit a wall and get knocked out. Ah, thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, that's what, y'all. That ain't no tell. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Woo. And if we say that we have not no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. He ain't asking you to be perfect. Look at that verse. He ain't asking you to be us to be perfect. We strive to be perfect. We strive to be Christ-like, but we still going to fall short. Romans 6, 23 says we all fall short, come to glory of God. All going to fall short, but we still strive. We still try not to do the thing that we used to do. Some of the things you did yesterday, you don't want to do no more. Some of the things you might do today, tomorrow, you later on, you might not want to do. Just understand this and say that he knows what we don't want to do. And he come after you. Because the thing, like Paul said, the thing that I don't want to do that I don't, that I do. But the thing that I do want to do that I don't do. Why? Because Satan get in and he mess it up. He don't want you to have a good time. I know. I was sitting home there uh, last week. I was having a good time in the Lord. I mean a good time. By myself, just sitting there reading by myself. My wife doing her reading. We there. Like then all of a sudden, some, I ain't going to tell you the story, but something popped up and they say, you know, Bam! I said, look at this. I said, look how Satan do. We let Satan get in here and mess it up. 
I said, Satan came in here, the thing was good, and just messed it up. And like you say, it's no more reading. When I say no more reading, I still tried to read, but it just wasn't right. It's like something happened. Like what I had going on with me and God, or me and Jesus, Satan took it away. I still sitting there reading that same word. Finally, what I did, he closed it up. I said, God, God, if I can't give you my undivided attention, and if I can't, and I'm reading your word, I got new glasses on, and they still seem to to me, and then I get to close it up, God, and just pray and give you the glory. And that's what you do. Do not let Satan take your glory from you. Even when he think he take it, pray. You pray to God or Jesus, and then they'll know. Amen? Amen. Ah, yeah, yeah. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to clean us from all unrighteousness. Clean us from all unrighteousness. We have to be clean. We need to be washed by the word of God. Uh, uh, <clears throat> as we be clean by him, as we confess, though. The word say confess, right? That means we got to tell. So if you know you're doing wrong, you ain't got to tell. I ain't got to tell a bishop. I can go to Jesus myself. I can go to Jesus right now. Say, God, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me for what I did. I know I just should have said that. Or forgive me the thought that I had in my heart. I ain't said nothing. I ain't did nothing, bishop, but the thought. Forgive me my thought, God. Change me. Change me to turn. Change me, Lord. So that I can be who you want me to be. So I can go forth and spread your good news to your people. So I can let them know that Jesus is good, God. That there's still a God in New Jersey, too. That's a God all over. They're trying, to, they're trying to scare us. But us who believe to know the word know it ain't done. He said, be rumors of wars in Matthew 24. Rumors of wars. Earthquake and die with places. It's happening. Look around. Listen to the TV. People killing people, nothing. Every time you turn around now, they go into school. Why are they in the school or the church they want to kill? That was our sacred place. You can go to school and go to, go to church. You, both, you are fine. But see, Satan is trying to show us. With, there you go, Bishop. Because we have, we speak all the time about. And um, uh, Matthew, I mean, Timothy, 1 7, 1 and 7 say, He had not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of a sound mind. Now, fear is coming in now. It's coming in so hard. It's coming in so hard that, that people, that they, they, I mean, I had, it coming in so hard, I'll be honest, I had to get on my knees. I had to get on my knees and so I said, Wait a minute. This thing, I ain't worrying about 45. 46, 48, 48, 49, whatever they are. I'm worrying about Jesus. I'm putting my trust in Jesus. No matter what happens, trust go in Jesus. I see what's going on. You see what's going on. You know how we, some people, how we get sick and then God bless us and we look better than we did after, before we got, after we got sick than what we were sick. Ain't nobody but God. Nobody but God that keep us going. When I went to the doctor, they told me I was a bad doctor, told me, Bishop, I was a time bomb. I said, what? He said, yeah, that was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, about 15 years ago. I said, a time bomb? He said, yeah, you got high blood pressure, sugar, diabetes, and cholesterol. I said, what? I said, man, I feel good. He said, you might feel good, Mr. Alexander, but I'm telling you, he was a time bomb, man. He said, I said, well, give me some medication and, and whatever we'll go from there. And, and God got the rest of it. He said, so, but hey, we here. We still here. You know, and that's only because of Jesus. It ain't no other reason. No other reason for the season but to be here because of him. Jesus is the one that keep us and lead and guide us. Amen. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word is not in us. The word is not in us, so we can't go around and say that we have not sinned. 
Because when you do that, we got a lot. That's why I think about it, Bishop. I mean, I'm not trying to get on nobody. I mean, even the the, the, the Pope, I mean, for a nigga, uh, he's God. He ain't God. God is God. All by himself. But everybody, I don't care who you are, you get in the bathtub, wash yourself. Go get a white shirt, put it on, and look at it in two minutes later. It got some dirt on it. So it don't make no difference who you are. We get clean, but we got some dirt on us. That's why we have to pray every day. That's why we have to fast sometimes. Meditate when you want to. But we have to stay in the word so we can be washed by the word of God. Because if you're not washed by the word of God, then you're not clean at all. We know God told Peter, I'm going to let me wash your hands. Peter said, no, God, I don't want you to have no part of me. You ain't got no God. You is God. Bishop, you ain't got no business touching my feet washing them. You is the bishop. No, sir. I won't let you do that. You ain't supposed to be in that low, bishop. Ah. But God told him, Jesus told him, if you don't let me wash your hands, you have no part of me. You don't let me wash your feet. I'm sorry. You don't have no part of me. He said, if you don't let me touch it, you have no part of me. Peter said, God, not only my feet wash them, wash my whole body. Not only just get the, get the water, just dump it from my head to the toe. And if that ain't enough, do it again. And again and again. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be washed in the word. We're supposed to make sure that we uh, humble ourselves first, turn from our wicked ways, and seek his faith. Then he'll pray. Then he'll hear from heaven and forgive our sin and heal the land. But we have to trust him. We got to know that we know that we know that God is at hand and that he's still cleaning. He ain't never stopped. He never will stop. A lot of times we want to stay dirty. And you know what happens when we stay too dirty. It don't smell too good. So that's what, there you go, sister. Nobody want to be around. When we see you coming, we want to go the other way. So the best thing for us to do is what? Stay clean. Stay in the word. Stay praying. Stay prayed up. Stay fast up. Meditate when you want to. Because your meditation may not like be like my meditation. My meditation ain't like bishop meditation or deacon meditation. Everybody got a different way they want to meditate. But we all thinking it. We all get to the same point. Thinking on the goodness of Jesus. And giving him all the glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope.